What's up everybody, Tiankim here with Sewing Your Quilting. I'm gonna try out three famous mini sewing machines so you don't have to. Let's get started. So starting off, I'm gonna start with the smallest. We'll work our way up to the bigger ones here and uh, I'm gonna even open them for you so you guys know that this is my first take, first time seeing these machines. So um, I've got the handy stitch sewing machine. Oops, oh my goodness. Packaging is uh, tight here on this one. So this machine comes with some bobbins that have thread on them, which is interesting. And it's a legitimate thing going on here. It takes batteries. We're, we're gonna be right back. I have to get batteries and I realize that it, no batteries were in the box. So let me go grab some batteries. It has directions on how these go. It looks like one this way, one this way. And then alternate on the other side, maybe? No, maybe not. We're gonna just give it a try. Ooh, that's a snug. Eh, battery's not in the right way. Let's turn them all around the other way then. Maybe it goes like this. I mean, who needs instruction, right? When you can just power of elimination right here. Oh. There we go. So, first things first, a couple things I'm not noticing here. Um, you have bobbins here, but there is no bobbin area. Your bobbins are actually what you're winding the thread on to sew, which is, which is interesting, obviously. I don't necessarily understand how to wind a bobbin. We're gonna figure that out today. But one thing I find uber interesting is that this has a port for power and doesn't come with the port to charge it. So I, I don't know how that all works. Now, a couple of things, let's just dive right on into this. You click the button, it, it does so. It makes a funny sound. So let, let's pull this out. I don't know how to lift the pressure foot. I don't know if you can lift the pressure foot. Oh, it looks like you just actually lift the pressure foot here. Couple of things to notice here on this little machine, and I don't, I, I don't even remember how much we paid for it. I think it was like 15 bucks. It's very, very cheap on this. Is that, let's come in here to the stitching. This is the sample that they've given us. That looks like a clean stitch, obviously. But if you flip it over, you'll see that it's kind of a little bit of a gimmick here, guys, in the fact that this machine they're calling a sewing machine and does it so technically yes this is a chain stitch machine meaning that it only takes a top thread and it loops itself around in the back creating a chain stitch the original sewing machines like we're talking gen 1 sewing machines use this technique to sew so technically is it a sewing machine yes but i would expect for it to make locking stitches because that's what modern day sewing machines do however let's do a little bit of sewing on this see how we feel now First thing right away here is, how do you get an accurate seam? I don't know. I'm gonna try to do the best accurate, maybe half inch or quarter inch seam that I can do. Um, it's a two-handed job at this point. And what you think is the front of the machine is actually the back of the machine, it looks like. Maybe it sews this way. Let me stick that in there. Yeah, so this sews this direction, which is backwards than what you would think it sewed. Unless maybe, does this go into reverse and, no, no. Let's turn it the other direction all the way. Okay, so that's stitch length right there. How many stitches per inch, essentially, but let's try to sew something here. Oh. There, there's like, let's bring the camera up top. There's like no good way to sew here. Like it's sewing away from you. You have to use one hand to hold down the button while you're feeding it with the other hand. In Vegas, we live in Las Vegas. We have a lot of shows here, a lot of plays. They have a machine similar to this where they hem pants with if a pant hem tears out of it, where they can portably take it put it into the hem and do a quick mend so that they can finish their act and get off stage. But like sewing, 
Mechanically wise, can it sew? Yes. Do, do I agree with how it's sewing? Not particularly. Um, but there are four screws in the back. I wanna see what's inside of this machine so that you know kind of what you're getting. I, I mean, guys, it's like $15 or maybe it was $18, I, I can't remember. Um, I'm not asking for a lot here. Okay, okay. Now now here's here's the juicy part here. I wanna save my batteries because I think I spent more on the batteries than I did on the, on the machine there. What I thought and the reality behind it are the same thing here. So this has a metal, it's probably tin or aluminum um, mouth on it. That's the clamping portion of this whole thing. Oh my goodness, look at this. So all the gears and how the entire machine operates is all just, it's a cheapo plastic. You, you can't really, maybe you can see it. You can see the glue holding this thing together, literally holding this thing together. Is the concept core, is the ingenuity behind this amazing? Yes, I mean, it does so, it's $15, it's cool. But, I mean, as far as repairability goes, if something went wrong with this machine, it's gonna cost you 80 bucks to fix, probably. Because you gotta source these pieces, you gotta put the time of labor into it. Uh, unrepairable, in, in, my, in my opinion. So, that right there is the portable mini electric change this machine. I'm not even gonna call it a sewing machine. Let's go on to the mini sewing machine next. Mini sewing machine, aesthetically, it's just a box. I mean, this box was at least pretty. This one's just a brown box. Something that it has on the back of the box all over the place here. It says, important. Before connecting the power supply, please always turn the hand wheel towards you at least three times to start sewing. Interesting that you have to do that. And it says, please do not use battery and power adapters at the same time. So I'm guessing this machine takes batteries along with a power connection, which, I mean, we got batteries because of our last machine. So, operating manual, which is, which is nice to see. Slide on table, I mean, bang for your buck wise, this machine's kind of got some cool things here. Um, let me just pull everything out of here. This is quite interesting. They also have a tutorial on the back of this card to learn how to use this machine. But I mean, I am a certified master technician. I think I can figure this one out. As far as packaging goes, it's packed well. I mean, it comes from overseas, so it would have to be packed well so that no damages happen to the machine. Let's open this guy up. It comes with a thread kit. Now, be mindful here. I think we paid 45 bucks for this. Maybe it was $49 for this. Um, 50 bucks. I mean, you sure get a lot of things for $50. So let's see kind of what's going on here. First thing I noticed right away is that this doesn't actually clip into each other. It's actually just got felt pads on it. I'll turn it around so you guys can see. It just has felt pads where it kind of makes a table. And then this has storage in it. Normally that's where you would access your bobbin, but I don't know if it has a bobbin, so let's find that out. First thing is, again, with this, it's got a bobbin here, not a spool of thread. And, oh, great guys, great. Some good news. This is an actual sewing machine. It has a bobbin in the back, meaning it makes a, a not a chain stitch, it makes a locking stitch, which is good news just in the fact that I think it's safe to say at least that you could technically call this a sewing machine. I'm gonna to try to figure out how this works. This is the foot control, the foot pedal, which is actually quite, I mean, it's kind of funny, right? Like, I, I like this. I think it's fun, guys. I think it's fun that they have these. Um, usability, that's the whole reason why we're here is, are they even functional, which we're, we're about to find out. Something that's really nice is that it's stitch ready, so that means we don't have to learn how to thread it or anything. It can just be rock to the races for sewing. I mean, at the current moment, the way that I'm feeling about this machine, I mean, it's plastic. I mean, you can feel like it, it's plastic, but does it sew? Let, let's get some stitches in there. I'm not sure if you can see this. The foot is like actually walking, like it's, it's moving, which is it? I mean, it's not right. See how the foot is shaking with the foot. As 
far as I can tell, this machine has one speed. So that you can't like ease into it. Like if I ease into it, listen. Like it's, it's automatically at full speed, which is this right here. Um, from the looks of it, it is showing. I mean, big plus there. I see that it has the ability to change your tension for top tension, uh, which in my case, my, my top is not tight enough. So, I mean, I can make that adjustment. As far as machine goes, is it a sewing machine technically speaking? Yes, yes, it, it, it is a sewing machine. I need to grab the user manual real quick to figure out how to wind a bobbin or if it can wind a bobbin. So give me one second for that. <laughs> okay, this is hilarious. To wind a bobbin on this, I've never seen this before, which is humorous in my opinion. Let me pull out one of my bobbins here that are pre-wound. And that's probably the reason why they give you so many pre-wound bobbins. I'm gonna empty this really, really quick. Not the greatest content, but. Crap. Okay, so how this machine operates and works for the bobbin winding experience here. So your thread goes here, okay, which makes sense. Then you wrap it around this guy right here. So it has something to be pulled through. Then you take your bobbin and you stick it on the end of your sewing machine where the hand wheel is. Okay, which I've never seen that. You're supposed to give it a wrap or two around and then go through one of the holes at the top, like so. Then you clip this thread with my, my scissors that don't work. And then you turn on the machine, which because of the hand wheel moving, it will wind the bobbin. I mean, the very first thing, it just flies off off the end there. Let's try that again. I think the best way to do it is just like. It's not sounding great, but. Oh, and it actually looks like this piece right here is what's supposed to hold my thread in place. You actually wrap it around that. The, oh, I, I'm. It's jammed. Jammed to the point that I won't come back on. I'm gonna open up the machine show you guys inside of it, but let's be honest. Does the machine operate? Yes, yes, it's a $50 machine. Um, could you sew on this? As we did here, we sewed a, actually a, an entire line off that one, which was very nice to see. There's a lot of ingenuity behind this, a lot of cool ideas. It's cool, it's got some features, but let's see what's inside of it. The screws are actually screwed in there quite tight. Oh my gosh. Like I'm yarding on, on the screws to try to get them out. I'm assuming this voids warranty. I'm, I would just assume that. That's a warranty, a warranty strip, which is funny. <laughs> like, if you have to do warranty work on this machine, then it's probably just not worth it. Who's gonna win? Round one. Don't show this. Once you open up the insides, it kind of reveals the truth behind sewing machines. Now, first things first, is that this machine structurally relies on the front cover being on it, okay? What I mean by that is if we look at the needle now, I'm hitting the needle plate, you see that? I'm actually hitting the needle plate. That means the entire body of this machine has flexed out of place, okay? The reason being for that is that there's nothing structural about, about this machine. These gears right here are all plastic. Um, none of them connect together and to the frame. So they are kind of free floating in the system here. In all honesty, the, the ingenuity behind it's amazing, but like the practicality is close to, to nothing. These are all your buttons that you have on the machine. And if you look back here, all those pins should either be clipped or soldered or a way to keep them good. In, in reality wise of this whole thing, it's a $50 sewing machine. What do you really expect from it? Um, it does have that really cool feature of how it winds the bobbin. I think that's, it's ingenious so that they can cut down costs, right? So, I mean, go to Goodwill, grab yourself a $50 sewing machine there. It will last out last this machine. It'll outperform this machine without everything, pretty much. If you want it as a trinket or something like for kids or for like 
to finish off that little corner in your sewing room, okay, fine, it, it's a great or ornament, but uh, fixability not there, usability, it's 50 bucks, all right? So uh, let's move on. Machine number three, mini sewing machine. Now this one I think was 99 bucks, 98 bucks, so just under $100. Now, aesthetically, box is pleasing. It seems like it came directly from Singer. It's got a history of Singer on the side of it, which is cool. Um, we all know the Singer, we have Singer Featherweights. That's one of the best machines I've ever invented, but that machine was invented almost 100 years ago. So let's jump into this machine here. Got my seam ripper, gonna open this thing up. Now, I have a little bit more faith that like this one might be usable. <laughs> Let's just pop this guy open though. First thing, user manual, needles, a glass cleaner. I don't think there's any glass on the machine, but another one of these adorable foot controls. Power supply, some notions. Packaging wise, it's actually packed very well. Boom! Little Singer sewing machine. Now, this looks like a sewing machine at least. Um, it has a bobbin winder in the back. I mean, that's a major upgrade from our last, our last one there. One thing that I'm seeing right out the gate though is I don't see any thread. I'm, like, I'm taking from my machine over here. So, as far as the spool goes, this is how you put your thread on, I think and the spool pin doesn't go out far enough to put your spool cap on, but I mean, it's fine. The next thing is, is there's no sew out on this, so that means it was never checked by the factory, I, I would assume. Bobbin is fully wound, it looks good. It looks like it has a real bobbin case. Got a cutter. It's looking like a normal sewing machine. Obviously now I'm gonna have to thread this because it doesn't come with thread pre-attached like the last ones did. So far though, it's at least looking like a real, real sewing machine. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, I guess this is old school. Got it. Add a little spit to that one. Okay. Ooh, first try. So far, this, this is a sewing machine, okay? So far. I mean, it only looks like you have like maybe four inches here of throat space. So, I mean, that's, that's great. That's great. Let's get this plugged up. No batteries. That's, I'm, I found that's a good sign. You cannot run this machine with batteries. Now, as far as accessories go, as far as this machine goes, that's what you're looking at. You got a couple extra bobbins and a spool cap. Let's hear this thing So, So first thing I'm gonna do, just good practice, I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread just to make sure that the machine's also operational. Stick this underneath the needle and we're gonna hear this puppy go. Um, similar thing to the mini sewing machine. There's no ease into this, like, it's on. <laughs> it's very, very quick, and it only has one speed. As far as stitching goes, like, I mean, you can come see, that is a, this is technically a sewing machine. It's made a sewing uh, lock stitch. Now, this is also the first machine that has multiple stitches. So let's, let's jump into maybe, a zigzag. Let's just see how, how we do on zigzag. Is it perfect zigzag? No, but it is a zigzag. Now that's a huge improvement from our last machine there. Um, it has a reverse button. It It is, it's a mini sewing machine. Okay, that, that's what this is so far. Now, before I get too too excited about this, something that is important with a sewing machine is that what's on, on the inside. Um, let's find out. Let's see. Let's see what's on on the inside. Minded guys, this machine right here is ninety nine dollars retail. That means it's not even on sale. So I'm not gonna say I have super high hopes by any means. Now, first thing that I want to say here is I'm not knocking any brand here. Okay. Singer is a absolutely amazing company in the sense that if it wasn't for Singer, then what would the sewing machine industry look like? 
But we also have to realize that this is being produced for the masses. And so let's see what that looks like. I have a screw inside of this already somehow, which I don't know how I've achieved that. Okay, now wait one second here. Wait, wait one second here before we get, get all excited about this. You see a lot of metal, okay? However, there is no frame, okay? This honeycomb plastic is what holds this machine up. So obviously plastic gears everywhere. That means if your machine gets stuck and you pull on it, it's gonna just break your gears, um, which is fine. That, that, that's, I mean, it's a hundred dollar machine. I mean, it, it has all the things to make it a functioning sewing machine and it has gear settings. So there is that. As far as fixability, um, can it be fixed? Absolutely. It has all the components to be able to be fixed. However, it's a hundred dollars you bring into the store, we're gonna charge you 60 to 80 to fix it. It becomes a math problem. But with a machine like this, if this machine gets torqued this way or this way, okay? So that means if it has a nasty fall, anything like that, if it gets tweaked at all the head on this machine, you then, just like there, hit the needle plate. It's just the same problem that we had on the last one in that there's nothing structurally holding this machine together. Now, if it sits on a table and you just continue sew with it, will it sew? Yes, it looks like it is actually a sewing machine. Do I think the values there, I mean, $100 in today's world, to get an operating machine that you could actually sew on, that's pretty impressive. That, that is a pretty impressive feat. However, if we upcycle, again, Craigslist, offer up, Facebook Marketplace, you're gonna find a machine that's got way more metal inside of it, has a much longer lifespan for $100 or less. So there is that. Heck, even for a little bit more money, like a, um, I'll just throw out a bunch of different machines here. Janome has like the Janome Gem Gold, the Singer Heavy Duty, the Burnett B05, the Juki, I wanna say it's the F600, don't quote me on that one. Um, they're all around like the 200 to 250 dollar price point, which I understand is double the price of this. But you're gonna get so much more of a machine as far as mechanics, motors, gears. You're gonna have have something that's gonna last you a while. All in all, but let me let me just put all the machines back here, and so that way we can give you kind of like the final review on these. But guys, these are the mini sewing machines that we're seeing on TikToks and the trends and all that. I do feel like they have purposes, like. I could see this in the costume world of a quick hem. I could see this in like a ornamental or maybe even like a doll setting. It's a cutesy little machine. This one, if you just need to have one in your back bedroom and you're never gonna sew, but you need it for that one rainy day, will it work? Absolutely, I, I think that would work. However, if you're getting into sewing, I don't think I would recommend these machines at all either bite the bullet and spend just a hair more to get a better quality machine or cycle up, get on offer up, Craigslist, any of those kind of places, Facebook marketplace, and buy yourself a used machine that will, that will treat you well. Guys, if you have any questions on what machines you need to start getting into, you want to start in the hobby, or you just need more answers to the questions that you have, down in the description below, there's a website there for us on top of our phone number, give us a ring and we can help you out with that. But all in all, it's a fun trend. I enjoy the trend. I enjoy all the people watching these trends because it brings just more light to the sewing industry. But with that said, it is a trend. I would not recommend this to anyone really. And I'm glad that you guys get to see exactly what these look like. That way you don't have to go out and spend the money yourself there. So I hope you like it. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do with these machines now. So I'm gonna go figure that out and we'll see you on the next one.